Hey everybody, welcome to sunny Atlanta where I'm with all the other YouTube woodworkers down here at the woodworking show. It's not convincing, is it? No. And it's April. But it's not April Fools. Unfortunately, this is the reality here in my backyard. Let's go down to the shop. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to my shop. I wasn't even planning on filming anything this weekend but I was sitting there and I saw that snow outside and I just had, to, had, the, had the crazy idea that I had to run out and do something with it. And all stereotypes about Canada aside, that's a fluke. It'll be gone in a few days. It really is spring up here. So I've spent the last couple of days ripping apart and redoing my ceiling. And you know, there's, it's one of, these, one of those projects where you work, 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 and when you're done, it doesn't really look like you did anything. But what I did, you know, I talked about lighting and um, back when I did that LED video a couple of weeks, couple of months ago, and I used to have fluorescence below the joists, and what I've just done, and anyways, I had a lot of issues with glare and hot spots in my video and just glare in general, and so what I decided to do after, after having done that LED video and it kind of worked out okay, is I've ordered several more strips, and they're on that slow boat from China again, so I'm waiting for them. But I took all my fluorescents, these, these three fluorescents, and they used to be on the joists, so below the joists, and I've sunk them all up into the joist bays. So actually, I'm getting less light now out of the fluorescents because it can't spread around. However, I've added these two strings of LEDs here, and I'm going to be putting some more on the other side, and that should just fill in and balance everything nicely. Now, as a mini follow-up to that LED, um, I can't really recommend one of these. This is that DC to DC converter that I talked about that was going to step it down from 19 volts to 12. When I was shooting that video, it was off and on and off and on and off and on with the lights. I never really had them on for a long period of time. And after I published that video, about a week or so later, I was just down here working in my shop and I had my lights on for, I don't know, 45 minutes, hour and a half, and they just died. And when I started testing, I found that this thing was not putting out any volts at all anymore, absolutely dead. And if you recall, I bought this thing online and it came with basically uh, no documentation whatsoever. I had to look up online how to use it. And in particular, what's really missing is any documentation about limits. I did a bit of Googling and I found somebody who was reviewing basically the same kind of thing, not you know from the precise same vendor, but the same part number. And he said these things overheated and burned out if you put too many amps through it. My DC power adapter is putting out about four and a half amps. And here's where I'm going to run that disclaimer again. Not an electrical engineer, I'm a software guy. Um, I can read instructions and I'm pretty good with the DIY, but um, this thing didn't work. However, as you can see, I've got both strings of LEDs working, but I have them running just off of one 19 volt power adapter right now. I came across this other video, I'll put a link down below, it's by a guy, his channel is DIY Perks, and he did this video where he took two sets of strings, just like that, and he, he made a, a, a little square LED panel for photography, and and he told, he, he explained that you could run that off of a single laptop power supply, because when you put the two of them together in series, the uh, you know, I, I'm going to go back to that disclaimer thing. He said it would work. I tried it. It seems to be working. I've, I've had this going for hours and hours. And so I've got the one 18, 19 volt power supply. The two uh, strings are hooked up in series. The other thing, part two, about uh, that LED um, lighting is you'll recall that I that the glue failed on the adhesive. Actually, it, it ended up failing on both of them and I then glued it down with hot glue. Don't do that. Let me bring the camera over and see if I can... Uh... It's really tough with the lights on. But basically, this is the first string, so this is where the power plugs into, and that's um, very hot, very hot, and it, and it just it remelted the hot glue. So right now, I have it basically taped. Every, every 12 inches, I have this one taped. This one's doing okay. This one is fairly cool. This is, this is the 50-50 uh, SMD. I don't know if it's because it's the first one in the string 
or if it's just these are the 5630 SMD LEDs. But anyways, here you can. Uh, I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. Like the, it, the the hot glue, just you know, I can stick it back up and it'll hold for a bit. But yeah, <laughs> that's uh, not a good solution. Um, I wonder if uh, I should have looked for uh, if I were to do this again, which I'm going to look for for the other strips that I order. I'm going to maybe see if I can find some metal, maybe some aluminum that I can put it on, because that should you know help dissipate the heat. I mean, it's not tons of heat, but I guess it's just you know with wood is of course a great insulator, so the heat has nowhere to go. So the fluorescent lights are of course controlled by a wall switch, but I also added an outlet in the ceiling, which is also controlled by a switch so that I can control the LEDs the same way. And I think this has gone on long enough for a quick update video that I just decided to shoot on a lark when I saw all that snow flying outside. So to all you people down in Atlanta, I hope you're having a great time. To all the other YouTube woodworkers down there, I'm jealous. I wish I could be hanging out with all you guys and maybe next time and we will see you soon. Ha ha ha.